Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? Uh, Michael Barton here with a uh, with a new video. I haven't been making videos much lately anymore. There's been a lot of interference, a lot of chaos, um, a lot of manipulation in my life lately, and it has taken me away from doing this, which I think is the point. Um, but I, I just wanted to sit down and make another video that I get dressed up today and uh, make this video instead of just wearing a t-shirt. And uh, thought maybe that would uh, help our viewership, you know? If you look a little more presentable, uh, people might take you a little more seriously even though they know there's a lot of crooks in suits. Uh, just uh, might help out a little bit. So there's a few things that I wanted to go over with with everybody today that are the very important topics. I just have a couple notes here just to kind of help me along. And, um, you know, I always just kind of do this on the spur of the moment when I'm, I'm feeling a little worked up. Not worked up, I'm a lot worked up over this last uh, couple weeks. Um, the stalking and harassment have been It's not to the point that it was last year when they hit me with the, the big wave, um, but it is very close. Everywhere my girlfriend and I go, um, we are followed by uh, multiple vehicles, most of them recently that are following us. They have the telltale signs of the, uh, the sensitization, um, have been red vehicles for some reason. They seem to switch it up. Every couple of weeks, I'll get something different, and there'll, there'll be a, a pattern with that. And uh, these vehicles that are following us around uh, will either have one headlight uh, out, one taillight out. They have their brights on. Uh, they will. There will be more than normal, uh, more than normal amount of those vehicles basically hovering around you. There's always somebody no matter how fast you're going if i slow if i'm in a 45 and i slow down to 30 miles an hour there's somebody that's staying behind me all the time we get to our destination there's people waiting in the parking lot every single time we go in and as i'm going somebody will back out and pretend like they're going to hit me slam on their brakes um, giving dirty looks uh, making longer than uh, normal eye contact with you and trying to get your attention. They'll be on their cell phones, aiming their phone at you. They'll be on their cell phone reading something and then they'll look up at you and give you a weird look, shake their head, um, stand behind you in line at the store, stand in your personal space, um, ask you weird questions. Uh, when you have a conversation with them, they um, try to act confused, like they don't understand what you're talking about, even though you present very easy to understand information, hand out flyers, different things like that. You know, these people just act weird. And it's intentional to uh, to let you know that you're being surveilled and monitored and it's part of the PSYOP to try to make you think you're going crazy. And that's part of what I'm gonna talk about in this, uh, this video, is the uh, crazy making thing. This, psychological evaluation that I paid for. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I, I made a video in November of 2017, just a couple months after I realized that I was a targeted individual, what, targeted indivi what a targeted individual was, um, that this is a calculated government program, compartmentalized government program that's highly classified through the FISA court to track, monitor, stalk, harass, slander, and slow kill targeted individuals. Um, I started making the, the, uh, the videos in, in, like I said, in November of 2017. I started questioning people, the uh, police officers that were following me around, hitting their lights right when they're behind me and I pull over and they just take off. Um, even though there was plenty of room to go around me in the first place, there was no reason to get behind me and turn their lights on. The fire engines that will drive by hit lights and sirens right as they go by and then shut them off. Uh, EMS, American Ambulance, uh, they would do the exact same thing. I'd come into a parking lot right as I'm going by their vehicle, boom, hit the lights and sirens to, to raise that cortisol level so you're always in that fight or flight mode. Um, 
I started documenting that, as some of you may know that have been following me. Now, in December, it was the first week in December, right around the first, second week of December, I went to the just the local convenience store over here, do my daily routine, get a cup of coffee, grab a little snack before I started my work day, which I do own a business that I've, I've run for years and been pretty successful with it um, until they started dragging my business down as well. That's all another story um, because I do get stalked and harassed through my eBay store. It's, that's a whole another video and a whole another explanation, but I figured out exactly how they do it and um, it takes hours out of each one of my days time I can't get back in my life. So um, I made that video in, in December and the police officer that was engaging in direct conversation and harassment in the store that followed me into the store, met me at the store at the exact same time, pulled their vehicle in, parked, went in the store and just kind of lingered around. Um, you know, like she was just hanging out, talking to people uh, while I was in line, real close to me, laughing way louder than, than people normally do, right at me, you know, it's, it was their standard thing. And I was talking to the desk clerk about direct conversation. I told him I was doing a little documentary style thing on, uh, on gang stalking, explained to him what it was and explained to him that he had been involved in direct conversation with me before. And um, for some reason, I just got the balls to turn around and, and just start questioning this officer, just like I had questioned uh, people in my job as a professional journalist in the Air Force. Um, just a series of questions, and then when they give me the response, I process that information, and if it doesn't calculate, ask them questions. Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? If they were in my position, what would they do? Um, if they can't figure something out, why don't they run it up the chain of command and figure out what's going on in their community to help these people that are complaining of being stalked and harassed instead of calling them crazy, laughing at them, and ridiculing them? And uh, so I made that video. I told the uh, police officer that I was abused when I was a child and that uh, I wasn't going to stop investigating what happened to me as a child. Three weeks later, when I go, when I go to the store, there's a group of white cars all parked in the front, just like they, they normally run in packs, these compartmentalized organized stocking groups and they were doing the, the typical thing you know I was in the in the store the guy standing there at the like you know the chips and he, he pulled in at the exact same time I did walked into the store at the exact same time I did and the guy standing there um, looking at chips for the whole time I'm getting a coffee he's just standing there staring at the chips now a lot of these people that are addicted to their junk food they they don't have to sit there and stare at the chips for two three minutes to try to figure out what they want they know they eat Fritos or whatever kind of chips they have, they grab them, they take off. They don't stand there and grab the bag of chips and sit there and crinkle it and then stare at you and then give you a little smirk and then look back down and then keep staring at you and give you a little smirk like, you know, they're getting away with something. It's just part of the antagonization, part of the psychological operation uh, that these people are involved in. And they're given directions from whoever the handler is or the group organizer um, to play out their little skit to antagonize the target. And, uh, you know, I, f I followed this guy out of the, uh, the store uh, to get the information on the side of his truck. It was ACT uh, Bioengineering, I believe. I, I posted something on my Facebook page. I've got it in my, my records where this guy worked. But uh, I followed him out and I started, you know, actually I had my window down. He rolled his window down and said, you know, sort of saying, what's up? And I just started doing the same thing that I did with everybody. I, I, only I was really worked up that morning. I, I was getting some kind of interference and I was not acting like I normally would because of the high amount of stress and the pressure and the unknowing of what was really going on at the time. It was all brand new to me. It had been going on for a long time, but all of the new information uh, that I had learned was, was new to me and I was having a hard time processing what I was going through. Now I fully understand what I'm going through 
and I've, I've recovered mentally and am fighting this the best that I can. And I'm in a good place right now. And um, I hope that some of you that are just learning what you're going through can watch some of these videos and, and these will be helpful. So anyway, I'm not going to talk anymore about that incident. I have, um, I have court coming up. I was supposed to go to court and either accept a plea deal or decline the plea deal and fight this case, which I could easily do if I was not a targeted individual, but I know that I'll end up in a kangaroo court and I'm going to be treated unfairly, and I could go to prison for a uh, mandatory minimum five years, possibly up to 15 years, for aggravated assault with a firearm. Um, so anyway, after that happened, I went and obtained an attorney. My attorney's name is Mark J. Victor, B-I-C-T-O-R. Uh, there's another attorney that works with him. His name is Andy Markintel. Um, and I can't even remember how to spell that, but Mark Victor, like Mark, like they call us targets, a Mark Victor Conqueror, Andy, Mark, and Tell. Hey, you know what? Might be a stretch with the names, but sounds kind of interesting to me. So I went to this attorney's office, explained to him what was going on. Um, they said they could help me, and I had started the process. I paid these guys $35,000 to work with me all the way through the end of the case. And they they presented themselves like, yes, we'll take this case. If you have video of this whole thing that went down, which you do, um, we'll be able to present that, have a case, get you off. I mean, this guy, this guy got a lady that murdered both of her kids, apparently, uh, out of it somehow who knows uh, through the plea of insanity I don't know what, what how, how they did it but basically that that guy's good enough to get somebody out of murdering two children uh, out of being convicted for murdering two children so I think if I presented my evidence to them and explain this whole thing in this targeting situation that they would be able to grab onto that and and uh, use that as evidence but it turns out they most likely have a national security letter from the um, FBI or CIA, whoever passes on these uh, national security letters, we're not sure yet. Um, so what they did is they recommended that I get a psychological evaluation and presented it to me like I was going to go get this psychological evaluation. They knew that I was a stable person. This uh, psychological evaluator named DJ Gaughan, G-A-U-G-H-A-N, Ph.D., licensed psychologist, here in Phoenix, Arizona, he would evaluate me and and show that I'm a stable, uh, mentally sound person, and they would be able to use that evaluation to um, prove that what I'm saying in court is is valid. So I thought, wow, that's uh, oh, and by the way, that was five thousand dollars. I spoke with this um, this person before I, I decided to go ahead and pay him the $5,000 and explain to him what gang stalking was. He acted like he was interested. He said there was something similar that he had dealt with before and that he could evaluate me and write something up that would, you know, uh, that would that would prove that I'm that I'm all right. So he told me it would take 15 hours of questioning me, counsel, uh, counseling me and evaluating me and then he would write up a report uh, for the court so I would have some you know some 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 backup here to, to show my credibility well I believed him and I went in for this psychological evaluation and um, as soon as I got in there as soon as I started pr presenting the evidence that I have the documentation the affidavits from people that I have like Karen Milton Stewart uh, the Ted Gunderson affidavit, you know, Ted's passed away, he, he was murdered, and um, William Benny's affidavit, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot who else is, uh, Gerald Sosby, Gerald, I almost forgot that you sent me your affidavit personally, I'm, yeah, so Gerald Sosby and Karen Milton Stewart both sent me their affidavits personally, Karen signed hers and mailed it to me in the mail, and, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I've got these credible people, one, Karen Milton Stewart, who was... Uh, worked for the NSA, an analyst, or linguist, I'm sorry, 
the NSA for 28 years and annually had to take a psychological evaluation. In her psychological evaluations, uh, the evaluator stated in her evaluation, which she still has, that she's one of the most mentally sound people that they have around there. And that, that happened for years over and over and over. And then when she blew the whistle on these people, they all of a sudden tried to say, oh, that's, no, nope, not anymore. No, nope. even though 20 something years of psychological evaluations, uh, we're gonna go ahead and change our mind now. And uh, um, that's a tactic that is used for us people that are targeted, that understand the system, understand the FISA court, understand FOIA requests, and you can get this information, understand targeting, how it's compartmentalized through the deep state, the FBI, CIA, NSA, and um, are trying to stop this. They use the, the, psych, the um, psychologist and psychiatrist industry to throw you into this system give you a negative evaluation and make you sound like a terrible person so that what you say in court is is not valid um, if if you put out any information further down the road that you are not a credible person and this is how the uh, character assassination program works you know they can't kill you well they can kill you they, you know they've killed some people um, but the way they like to do it is so covert um, because they don't want to have this on their hands. They want to contract this stuff out. They want to blame these compartmentalized groups that are doing this. 